muziek van Venus. De muziek die u hoorde is geïnspireerd door Omnek Onek. En zij zegt dat ze als kleinkind van Venus is gekomen met een boodschap voor de aarde. We gaan met haar praten in het Engels, want dat heeft haar oorspronkelijke taal. Welkom, Omnek Onek. You are from Venus. Yes, this is correct. Would that mean if I would take an aircraft or a spacecraft to Venus, I would meet Venusians there? No, not necessarily. Um, we at one time had physical societies, but now um, the planet is uh, in a cycle where it is no longer inhabitable by physical life. So we exist on another dimension, which is parallel to the physical. It's a higher frequency. So our whole society is in, in people. It does not have a physical existence anymore. Is there a way to get in touch with that other uh, frequency and that other dimension? Well, on the surface of plan uh, the planet Venus at this time, there is still a physical city um, that was preserved when it was a physical society. It is called the uh, City of Rets. It was at one time the capital of our planet, our societies, and it was preserved under a special climatic invisible dome, which protects it uh, from invasions or people seeing it. And at the same time, it exists on the other dimension, its parallel city. This enables us to manifest a physical body, to come into your societies, and also to, when we manifest our, our ships, we manifest on the, on the astral everything that we need rather than building with physical material. Um, we manifest our ships and then we can also bring them into the physical for our interdimensional or space travel. Are there now spacecraft from Venus around us? Yeah, there, there are many ships out there, um, some of them from Venus and some of them not. We do have big ships that carry the smaller ones and then the smaller ones uh, come into actually the location of the planet itself, various places they will land. So all the stories we hear about UFOs and, and sightings here and there, are they uh, true or at least approximately true that there has been contact with? Oh yeah, there have been many contacts made uh, for thousands of years and uh, I think the real public started to know more about it in the 1950s more than any other time. And basically, some of the sightings are real and some of them aren't, you know, so it's hard to discern whether they're real or not, but there are actually real uh, spaceships. Yeah. You say, I come from Venus, um, and you come with n a message for the world, um, which you've put down in some books, like Ich kam von der Venus, I came from Venus. Um, you have another book, Handbook for Venusian Spirituality. The lessons you, you describe are, are fairly practical Earth lessons about mantras and energy and uh, things that matter for daily life. Yeah, this, this is, is correct. Why do we need a Venusian to tell us the truth <coughs> about ourselves? Well, I think because um, I go into a larger perception of, of yourselves in relation to the universe and make you aware through, through my knowledge um, a lot of the lost history of the human civilizations on Earth and that indeed the first colonies of people were brought here from other planets a long time ago. And this knowledge has been lost through your wars and the rebuilding of your civilizations. Uh, you've picked up fragments of the information, so I sort of try to make the whole picture clear and then give you uh, an idea of how to change your own perceptions of yourselves versus the universe and it gives you a broader perspective of uh, your life rather than just from one limited kind of point of view, just mm -hmm. from the earth point of view. Now in history that what, has, what has happened is that we first saw the earth and human beings as the center of the universe and then we came to the conclusion that hey maybe the sun is the center of the solar system yep. and now we believe that you know we are part of the whole galaxy and the galaxy is part of endless galaxies um, and now you're telling even within the solar system there is other civilizations cultures yeah venus is it's, it's it's not too far off no it's it's kind of a sister planet for earth um, and and since the colonies were brought here from these other planets a long time ago then of course it's just your ancestors we're just you know like uh, you know, your relatives in a way. And so what we're doing now is we're trying to take you a step further 
and make you aware of uh, other dimensions, other realities that exist, even though you can't physically see them, that they are real, you know, that they do exist. Mm -hmm. And so it's teaching you to have a perspective of reality and, and another view. And Would it help us to see those other realities? Like the mystics <coughs> of all times have had experiences of seeing uh, things where people have seen angels, where people have seen little elves. Uh, well, that's, always that's why I'm here, you know, to, to show you that it's possible. Um, even though I physically look like you, I age a lot slower. I do have <coughs> a faster heart rate. It's been recorded. Carry my children several months longer. Manufacture my own calcium. And my brain is not separated into two halves, you know, like yours. It's synchronized. It work, works together where that you only have... Um, is that one of the of problems of our human condition, that there is in the middle, there's a left and a right, and then sometimes it works together, but most of the time one of the two hemispheres in the, yes. in the brain takes over yeah. and makes us uh, either very emotional or very rational? Well, this is the problem. Uh, you, most of the time you only utilize the part that uh, helps you in uh, your perception and your ability to uh, communicate and to live here in the physical, but you don't have the uh, ability to perceive the other dimensions and the other beings that exist. And, uh, but in the future, this will uh, actually be corrected because this wasn't uh, the natural condition of man. This was done... Uh, and the time right after the uh, destruction of Atlantis, it was done by an aggressive race of beings who wanted to manipulate and control the people here. And this division was made th that way so that you wouldn't have a perception, and you would only have the perception of the physical, and it would make it easier for, for you to, mm -hmm. to work. Now, now, there is technology like brain machines and, and certain uh, meditation techniques that help you already bridge the gap a little bit. Is your teaching along the same lines? Uh, yes, I teach um, that it's possible with certain frequencies, which I incorporated into my CD uh, for the meditation techniques. And I'm teaching that in the future, the Earth is also going to go into a different vibratory rate and that the human beings are actually going to change a lot physically. But it will be such a gradual change that it won't be so sudden that it will be that noticeable. There will be noticeable changes, but a lot of people won't be aware of what they are. So what I'm teaching is uh, to notice what's ch what's what the happening. Are. Yeah, the differences that you will feel. Mm -hmm. Now, the old Hindus already said that um, they believed that there were many worlds and many planets and that there were many civilizations and that people would not die but just go over in another lifetime, in another dimension, in another space. Right. So this is basically the same as, as the Venusian Beliefs. Yes, yes. We, well, these are older teachings than the Earth even itself. And a lot of the religions that uh, exist on your planet actually came from this basic teaching. Um, yes, we teach you that um, when you die, it's just a transition from one existence to another. The, the physical body is no longer inhabitable. It's like um, if you drive an automobile, you're not the car, you're the driver. So this body is your vehicle while you live here in the physical, and your soul is the driver, is the one that's in charge. And this soul, when this body dies, of course, it can't live here anymore, so it has to leave. And uh, it resides somewhere else, unless it decides to come back for some reason or another in another physical body. Now, coming back in another physical body is called birth. Now, you had four children, but where do the children then come from? They're, they're souls. They, 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 they come, come from, from space or well, whatever? they come from other dimensions. From another dimension, and they decide to materialize here. Uh, yeah, they make a choice. Uh, every human being makes a choice as soul before they're ever a physical being as to what uh, life they will go into and, and with whom, depending on their relation with them at other times. And it's uh, mostly just for learning, for an experience. This is really what we're here for, but most of us don't, and don't know that, you know. <laughs> so it makes it a little more difficult if you don't have this information. Does it help to see this lifetime then as a as a learning process, as a school for growing? Yeah, this, this really helps a lot because a lot of people get so ev involved emotionally and mentally and feeling that um, the fear that when this life is over, what's going to happen. If they have the opportunity to understand a different point of view, it gives them a little more relaxation and a little more ease in their life, you know, and they look at every situation just a little differently than they would if they didn't have this information. Yeah. You, you bring some practical uh, things, like mantras, sounds yeah. that 
according to your book, help you to, to develop certain qualities. Can you explain a little bit about it? Well, these are ancient uh, Sanskrit mantras from Tibet because we have a non-spoken language in, on Venus. Um, and at one time... Like a telepathy thing? Yes, and at one time all the human beings on Earth also communicated this way. But then they had to develop a spoken language when this uh, division was made of the brain. And <clears throat> first it was symbols, I think. Then it, then it transported into spoken language. And Sanskrit is one of the oldest spoken languages, and so it has a lot of power because it's, it's one of the original languages. And we choose to use Sanskrit mantras um, in relation to the other dimensions and because they have a certain vibration. And uh, each dimension has a color and a sound. And this is what I incorporate in the CD, is the sound of the dimension, the color, and the mantra. And when you repeat this mantra, it gives you the experience of this other dimension. You know, mm -hmm. through your own self, through your own. Um, a name ability. in itself might also be a mantra. Omnek Onek. What does it mean? <laughs> well, um, it's a Venusian name, which means spiritual rebound, and uh, actually, it's derived from Sanskrit itself, and it means spiritual comeback. And uh, because I've lived on Earth many times before, but this time I have a spiritual mission. Do you remember the previous times? Uh, many of them, yes. Have, t have things changed for the better? I would say it was half and half, you know. Uh, at this point, it could be better. And the, the mistakes in the past is that your technology has raced ahead of your, of your awareness and consciousness, and it's always ended in a destruction. And at this point, there is a big uh, influx of spiritual information and what you call the esoteric movements. That is to equalize your technology with your awareness so that this, we don't go into a destructive mode. And this is what our work is. So technology that is like uh, not, not paralleled by a spiritual development doesn't lead anywhere. Doesn't lead to destruction, in fact. Well, spiritual awareness and understanding and changing your perceptions and ridding yourselves of the divisions of the races and the cultures and the religion and realizing there is no superiority in, in any of this that there is no uh, superior human being, race, culture, or world, you have the ability then to ha have use of greater technology because this comes with spiritual awareness. Yeah, but you can say we're not, we're not inferior or superior to another race, but here you are Phoenician, you uh, live <laughs> longer, you come from other uh, realities. Jesus, I feel inferior to you. Uh, as a Venusian, I mean, only an Earthling. I mean, I'm bound to my own reality and and uh, yeah. spiritual, uh, sorry, material dimensions. Gee, well, you can. You I am too now. You know, I can't go back and live uh, in the other dimension because I've manifested a physical body, and I was brought here to actually go into your society and experience from a person that lived here. I grew up with a really normal family in America, who some of them were very prejudiced, very limited in their spiritual uh, understanding. And this gave me the opportunity fr from an experience point of view to really be immersed in heart and had to work hard at some times, raise my own children. And uh, I am actually kind of limited here too. You know, I don't have the ability to mentally communicate with someone because you don't have the ability to receive it if I send it. But this was your original state as human beings a long time ago. You know, this was also things that were possible for you. A lot of you don't live so long because you're taught by your societies that you are old at 60 or 65 years old, when in reality it's not true. So you've accepted this as true, and so therefore you've created this in your genetic structures by your belief system. And, uh, well, I just turned 50, but uh, I hope to live a lot longer. <laughs> but so you, you say the belief system is really the basis of our, what we are, even yep. th our lifespan, our society. Yeah some of your illnesses as well? Um, so we are living in, in a state of hypnosis all the time by some outer energy. Well, if they're telling you that certain things give you cancer and you believe this, you might develop this cancer inside of yourself because you don't realize the power of your thoughts. And this is what I'm teaching people, that a lot of your, your mental structure and your, your thought patterns have a lot to do with your, with your situations, not only within yourself, but within your society. And if you want it to change, then you have to realize that you have the power to change it by changing your own perspectives and your own way of living in relation to the people around you. Then you can create a different world. Some people 
believe that. Some others did believe it and, and came back with, with a vengeance and said, well, I had this terrible disease or whatever. I started believing that I could change my future <laughs> and I tried and I tried and it didn't work and now I call all these people who claim these liars because I wasn't cured and right. so on. So there is a, this is a double-edged sword. That's absolutely true uh, because of course um, you may bring with you kind of karmic uh, situations for your own learning in this life because you do bring with you certain karmic lessons that you have to go through that is ordained for your experience and among them might be certain diseases so your life may not be as long as others because you only need a certain amount of experience and uh, yeah it, it's it is it's a, a strange mix of being able to influence through your belief system that what happens yeah. to you and that which you cannot which well, is the karmic I think that it's, that I you think it's a difference in believing and knowing and a lot of people don't know how to really convince themselves they have to be convinced by some by some other source because this is what happens in your societies you're, you're always convinced by other sources um, this is what makes you have the choice of your different religions is through your parents uh, the influence of your parents your influence of your politics may come from your family or from your school um, so a lot of the things are, are influences that come from outside sources and I'm teaching people how to create this influence within themselves from their own source and their own strength and their own awareness of how great they really are. You don't, they don't realize their own power and I teach them how to, to feel this power, to feel this energy and to use it. Mm -hmm. Well anyway, you've put this in a couple of books. Yeah. It's called Ich kam von der Venus. Uh, just as a, it's an autobiography. How about uh, love on Venus? Um, well, we have two. We have unconditional love, which is uh, equal love for every living thing and respect. And then, of course, we have a, a kind of love that we would have for a particular partner, and which you would you would consider a sexual. <laughs> it's two different things. Um, and of course, uh, we don't have sex because we don't have a physical body, but we do have. You don't have babies then? Yeah, you know, we have children, but it's a different way. Um, but it's an exchange of energy between the two people, it feels very similar and even actually better than, than what you would actually experience here. And our children, it's a choice that we make and then the soul is invited and does come in. It's through kind of a ritual ceremony and uh, it's very similar to the physical kind of birth. But you see it as an invitation. It's not you who pick the children, so to speak. It's the children who pick you as to well, be the parents. We say that we're ready at this time to have a child to give this have this responsibility and then the child has already chosen us that, that comes in you know and if for some reason physically you're not able to carry the child or if you decide that you're not ready for this responsibility or commitment um, then of course the soul will leave but it will always return to you when, when the time is right and if it doesn't come to you directly it will come in some way very close to you that, that you still have this contact well, a different view on reality, a different view on Earth and on Venus from Omnek Onek. Thank you. Thank you.